The COB is presented by Rabobank. Awarded 2023 SMSF Savings Bank of the Year by Mozo. Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to the COB. My name's Carl Rodder. I'm with uh, Danny Okuye. And uh, well, Danny, three straight days of gains, it would seem. It would indeed. And uh, the ASX 200 looks like it's closed up 86 points. 1.2% 1.2% or 7,296 and uh, CBO 200 up 1.3% or 18.4 points to 1,395. We did get over that 7,300 level on the ASX 200 and it's basically some profit taking came in. Yeah, and uh, well, a little bit like yesterday, we'll see if we can manage to sort of push perhaps above that uh, that key rounds number in uh, post-market trade. Uh, nine minutes time, we'll, we'll find out, of course. But um, let's go across the themes of the day because, uh, well, we were set up for success from Wall Street last night. Obviously, mm. uh, some slack back t- potentially emerging in the labor market there. So uh, stocks rallying in the United States, uh, again, setting us up reasonably well, but um, maybe the sugar on top is just uh, some weaker than expected CPI figures, the uh, monthly CPI indicator. On a headline basis, a bit lower. Yeah, um, thank you, lower team. pump prices, pump prices. Yeah, the... it was an energy thing, wasn't it? <laughs> Which yes. is good. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe nothing to suggest that the real impulse has changed too much, but we'll, we'll take it, obviously. I totally yeah. take it. And if it you know, gives the uh, investors an excuse to do some buying because it was a, a weak market up until three days ago. Mm. And uh, yeah, it does look like inflation is going in the right direction. The trend is your friend. Yeah, exactly. So uh, some disinflation coming through, albeit modest, when you sort of strip out some of those volatile items. Um, the final stretch where, well, effectively 24 hours left of reporting season, those who report after tomorrow get a little slap on the wrist, I, I believe, for their for their tardiness. But um, a bit of a mixed bag again today. I guess that's just been the story uh, all along, and it totally. kind of always is. But uh, some big hits and misses. We'll get across those uh, in a moment. In fact, we might even start with that now because we um, had Flight Center's results out today. You, was it, did you yes, have the discussion just, with Graham Turner? Yes, we've just actually played the interview. So I spoke with Graham Turner. And uh, look, the market sort of turned its nose up a little bit at this one. But nevertheless, uh, what's notable, they're paying a dividend, 18 cents per share. It's about 52, 53% payout ratio. Um, underlying profits before tax, 106 million versus the $361 million loss. And ditto on EBITDA and revenues up to 2.3 billion from a billion a year ago. So a very, very substantial recovery story. Plus, they have done so much cost cutting. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, I suppose and you just have to walk, walk the through a CBD, right? Just to see the sort yeah. of, you know, um, kind of, I guess, um, well, certainly a, a less of a physical footprint than the business had before. Totally. Um, but uh, maybe just a factor of, a function of narrative. The stock was down today, but some of those travel stocks have sort of run, run up. Run up very, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's go to one company's share price that did benefit from mm. its results today, and that Brambles. was Brambles. Nice. Um, I don't know if you dug through that a, a great deal. Um, but, well, it would seem a, a decent set of uh, numbers there. But the share price, I think, was up 6 or 7%. Crazy, hey? It's got a 15 tag in front of it again. It's been a long while since I've seen Brambles at $15. But obviously, uh, the market seemed to probably like more that outlook of revenue growth of 6 to 8%. Ex- currency changes and underlying profit to grow 9 to 12% currency changes. So in an uncertain world where management have either provided no guidance or mm. cautious guidance, Guidance or cut the dividend, and they have raised the dividends and given optimistic guidance. I think that's probably why the share prices have responded in kind. Yeah, and again, we talk about that sort of whole narrative thing, and a, a company perhaps that when everyone was um, well baking in a recession before the end of the year, expecting that maybe a, uh, a stock like Brambles could be affected. Um, but yeah, but it's quite re- recession proof at mm. the end of the day. If they have costs under control, you're talking pallets that move foodstuffs around. Right. So it's it's historically. I used to cover it. Yeah. <laughs> Resilient. Well, there you go. Although and, uh, they had clean away in there way back then. <laughs> uh, and, and certainly high for the day. I think that might make it onto the leaders and laggards when we get to that. Uh, Helios, um, also one which Oh, that crashed and burned, didn't it? No, the share price was up. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, it, it, so obviously not as bad as expected. Well, I don't know. I just don't think it could have been any pop, uh, any worse. They could have been possibly worse. I mean, yeah, another uh, full year loss, 367.8 million. 
Um, revenue fell as well, um, but the share price was up 7%. I couldn't find a particularly good reason as to why it was either. I was just no. perusing the company's results. No guidance obviously delivered. Um, did uh, affirm that it wants to return to a position where it can pay out a dividend at some point. Um, but anyway, you know, it might be one of those crazy things where again, um, sold off heavily. Had to, I don't know, um, turn around at some point in time. Um, it's so noticeable how many companies have cut their dividends. Yeah. Particularly lately, there's a lot of like no dividend, no dividend, no dividend. And that really is a sign of stress balance sheets and also, you know, not great outlooks. Yeah. Okay. So uh, nevertheless, Helios up 7% today. Again, another one. You do get the sense we'll be featuring uh, in the ladies and laggards at the end. But in the meantime, Stock of the day with City Sheik. Absolutely. And I spoke with Gary Glover and Luke Winchester because they also reported today. Continue to, if, I had, if, I already, if I was sort of trying to bottom pick here and I've been caught, um, I'd probably be hanging on a bit longer here. Um, but it's not sort of one that I want to be in the long term. I'd be looking for to try and exit this on a little bit of a share price appreciation, but it's got, got some real risks still. Um, as our other retailers there have sort of um, uh, have brought in these sort of plus size brands, uh, which is sort of eaten in the competition. And the company's got some structural issues there around inventory, uh, a bit of debt there. So uh, it's, yeah, it's going to be a long haul, I think, for um, City Sheep. Yeah. It's one that I would actually exit. I think you'll see a raise here in the next few months. It'll probably be at the mercy of traders and the people who get that stock and who knows how to be structured. Uh, but it's worth keeping an eye on um, because you know there is a there is a brand and a business here that we know it. Uh, it will probably not get back to its 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 former glory anytime soon, but it can it can be bigger than what it is today. So I'll, I'll say sell just because of that looming what I think capital raise coming, um, but worth keeping an eye on um, for that recovery in retail and and for these guys more specifically. Yeah, so city chic, not so chic these days. No. Um, they've got 10 million of cash only on the balance sheet mm. and sales are going down. They've got an inventory problem. They've got more competition. So as Luke was saying, looks like they're going to have to come to market. And when your share price is as depressed as it is, that's a deep discount that they mm. might have to come along. So looks like, yeah, it, they've, they've got problems. Right, so mm. needs to clear. Two cells. Two cells, wow, okay. Mm. Um, so there you go. Um, certainly not going to the investment committee, that one. No. Um, but let's get a wrap on the day now. And for that, Will Science from Macro Capital joins us at the desk. Will, great to see you. Mm-hmm. Um, seems like at least this week, some of the, the, the macro is aligning for the markets and I guess uh, positive data, if we wish to call it that, out of the United States. And then also um, some decent inflation figures today as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think we've had a few good days of data, both <clears throat> domestically and globally. Um, so Aussie CPI, I guess, is front and centre today, at least domestically, uh, came in at 4.9%, at least the headline figure, so well below the 5.2% expected. I think there was a bit of uncertainty heading into that print, uh, just with uncertainty around the balance of energy subsidies uh, and also the impact of uh, electricity price increases. Uh, but great that we got a, a print with a four in front, so I think things are starting to trend the right direction there. Uh, and it certainly takes pressure off the RBA to raise the rate next week. So I think heading into the figure, um, futures markets are pricing about a 12% chance uh, of a cut and about an 88% chance of a pause. I think markets will be repricing the figures today and probably a greater chance of a cut. That said, I think we'll still probably pause uh, at that 4.1% at the moment um, before I don't think the RBA is ready to head into the next stage being cuts just yet. Mm. But ultimately, quite a good figure and it's bolstered the market today. Um, domestically, and then you add into that the jolts figures and the consumer confidence overnight, uh, a few good days uh, of uh, prints there. Um, the jolts figures were really positive, um, so anticipated to tick up from 9.2 to 9.5 mil, came in at 8.8, mm. um, so a really positive figure there uh, and the lowest job openings that we've seen in over two years. Um, so. I think there we need to continue to see that momentum in terms of the labour market with the payrolls on Friday. That'll be the key uh, kind of point as to whether this labour market is um, kind of normalising or not. Mm. Uh, but ultimately, really positive reads uh, on both on both metrics. Absolutely, and the um, bond markets responded in kind. But let's turn to this reporting season because it's been so volatile in terms of some of the responses and. Uh, how have you sort of observed sort of some of the outcomes if you had to summarise it? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think we began quite rockily uh, in the first week, uh, but since then, I think ultimately it's been reasonably positive. Um, I think we've had more um, positive responses than negative responses on the whole. Um, we've done quite well throughout reporting season uh, and exited out of a number of positions that we've had upside earnings surprises on. Uh, I think the strategy now is about allocating into high quality companies that have potentially been uh, too harshly dealt with mm. by the market. Um, and so I think there's a number of those kind of names. I think ResMed is mm. a good example, really high quality growing blue chip healthcare company uh, and a world leader in devices and technology for the treatment of sleep apnea. Um, and their earnings per share is still growing strongly, expected to con continue to do so um, next year. Uh, and despite missing expectations at $25 a share, we see that as a significantly underpriced stock and a potential buying opportunity uh, in a company that can sustainably grow their top line revenue, but also maintain a strong uh, bit to margin. Mm. So I think there's a few opportunities like that. Um, Wise Tech, I think is another good, yeah. a good um, mm. example of that. Again, super high quality company, the leading tech name in the space. Uh, and although margins are expected to um, soften a little bit uh, with investment into the integration of some of their recent acquisitions, um, their EBITDA margins meant to return to above 50% again in 2025. Um, so I think that's another good opportunity to add to portfolios at a discount. It's 20% off their, their recent highs. So I think uh, that's the strategy at the moment, exiting out of some of the winners uh, and looking to identify some undervalued names. And a winner would like Altium, do you think that's because we talked about that yesterday with, with, with um, Martin Crabb at Shore and Partners, he had a great chart mm. and you had this outsized move in Altium relative to the earnings growth. I mean, you know, he was just saying that's a classic one and if you look at ResMed again, an outsized mm. move to the downsides yep. relative to their earnings. Yeah, I think that's been the theme and it always is. The market tends to um, knee-jerk react and tends to overreact. Uh, and so if you can look to take advantage of both upside surprises and trim positions, lock in profits, uh, and conversely look to reallocate into companies that have potentially been uh, unfairly dealt with, uh, I think that's the strategy at this point in time. Uh, and just rebalancing the portfolio a bit into financial year for the, um, for the kind of coming, upcoming year. Well, great insights. I uh, hope you get to have a well-deserved rest over the next couple of days. As some of this starts <laughs> to wind down a bit, I'm sure it's been busy for you, but um, yeah, we'll touch base soon. We'll Thanks, there from Macro Capital. Okay, to the leaders and laggards we go and start with the leaders. We've uh, already flagged a couple that have performed reasonably well today. Uh, Sana Mining bouncing back. So I think it's basically wound back uh, all the losses yeah. uh, from Monday's development, which mm -hmm. was, of course, related to a bit of a C-suite change, I suppose. Brainship Holdings is just always volatile. But um, Helios and Brambles, there you can see. We spoke about the results. Yep. Um, perhaps uh, perversely up 7% Helios. I really couldn't find a kernel of information just yet as to why the markets might have liked it other than just, uh, well, uh, so it goes. Um, but Brambles, uh, one of uh, Danny's old staple, um, also up by 7%. Uh, and Lake Resources, I don't know if that's just another story as it relates Maybe to lithium. Maybe lithium stocks, yeah. I think they were quite uh, strong in the US. Maybe the punters decided, because it is listed in the US. Oh, is it really? I think oh, so, nice. yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, one thing I know about is, uh, you know, uh, retail clients who like to have a, have a punt and certainly uh, it fills most of the time that stock price or those stocks just move on uh, speculation and oh, people just having a little bit of fun with, uh, with uh, the volatility mm -hmm. uh, on a daily basis. But uh, let's have a look at the laggards now. And uh, Chalice Mining was actually just a story that I think actually broke after the close. And um, mm. I looked at uh, the Fin review. Actually, no, sorry, no, I'm mistaken. It wasn't. It was, it wasn't. Before, it was before the close. Sorry, yeah. I was just trying to go through the Fin review who, yeah. who was reporting on it. Um, but the concern was uh, relating to the way that the company was effectively appraising the value of the underlying commodity that was mining at one of its key mines, I believe. <laughs> uh, and everyone basically calling BS on it. Wow. Um, and so they didn't like it. So I think that's effectively the story again. I was just trying to get across that as I, I did see on my... Uh, God, the Wild here. West in Australia. Who would have thunk it? Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> um, Ball. It looks like uh, Seven uh, West has uh, taken uh, some money off the table on this one. That's what right. really... Yeah. So basically, I think they sold like a 1% stake or something. It didn't look too sizable. But yeah, taking some profits on that one. And Flight Centre obviously reported 
And uh, I'm not sure about Illumina or Pilbara, although Pilbara was very strong yesterday and it does tend to be quite volatile. Yeah, it does. Only a very modest drop for Pilbara. And uh, well, since its results at the back end of last week, just stripping out the noise that comes from the underlying uh, and very illiquid uh, and very, well, uh, opaque mm -hmm. with your market. Yeah. Um, a lot of downgrades coming through for Pilbara just in the short term. Um, so yeah. maybe some readjustments after its results yep. last week. Um, but let's move on. Small caps now. I'm sure there'll be some movers and shakers there as well. Uh, just motorcycle. Um, I haven't heard of that before. 23.4% um, higher. I wouldn't mind seeing what they do because it would be awfully uh, strange if they didn't do anything in the automotive industry. Um, Interesting that Bravura and EML are still running. So EML must be sorting out. I didn't have, have a check yesterday, but they must be sorting out some of the problems over there in Ireland. Yeah, uh, motorcycle uh, is in the business of new and used motorcycles, funnily enough. So um, it is up today uh, by a little bit, as you can see there. Um, no news that I can actually find, but perhaps it did report. We just haven't got across it. Um, EML continues to fly. And so does um, Tyro as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, both of those are still continuing but to, to I mean, on. they've been so hammered. Oh, I yeah. mean, it has been a pain trade plus for investors. Yeah, well, you know, we talk sometimes about just positioning and maybe a squeeze. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen it, but one would assume with a stock like that, you know, yeah. there's a touch of it in the price there. Uh, Legards and Small Cap Space, uh, Betmakers Tech, Experience Co. I think that really jumps out there necessarily as being, uh, well, ones that we cover all too much, but some big moves there. So uh, there you go, if it is of any interest to you. But before we wrap things up, let's get a look at what's coming up. And uh, what's well, going oh, to be just about. ADP figures. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, that's, that can be, you know, they've had some pretty strong reads lately. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been kind of the trend the last few months where it'll come out really, really strong. Strong, and then non-farm is a lot weaker. Well, not as strong. Well, yeah, which, and, mm. and historically, it has no very strong bearing on or, or, or relationship to, to the um, official figures. But nevertheless, it seems to stoke some worry. So we'll see if um, it's another strong print because that could cause maybe a little bit of a hiccup in the market. Uh, prelim GDP, so that's the second print for, for this quarter. And uh, home sales, we've been talking about that a lot recently, haven't we? So yep. it could be interesting to see the uh, little intricacies there. Uh, last but not least, let's push on. What's on tomorrow? GDP partials continue to come through. I need to right. have a chat if anyone's interested uh, with Jarek Kopcher from St. George about what to expect from um, some of those figures in the week ahead. GDP mm -hmm. comes out next week. Um, but some of the results there too to, to wrap up, uh, well, the month of August, winter. Absolutely. And yes, we'll head into spring and also ex-dividends, REA, Treasury Wines, Woodside, Whitehaven and Woolworths. And uh, it was just interesting, actually, at one stage today, West Farmers had almost completely carried its dividend. In fact, you could say it's just down 0.76%, which really isn't too bad. No. You know, it's always... Modest. Back again, back in the day, we always used to look and see if uh, companies could carry their dividend. It's usually quite a good sign of a healthy market. Bullish signal. All right. We can turn <laughs> an indicator into that somehow, maybe uh, monetize that. But um, anyway, let's uh, wrap things up uh, there. Where did we finish, uh, Danny? Well, I hate to say it, we didn't crack, according to my data, 7,300. We got 7,297, up 87 spot, 2 points or 1.2%. And the SIBO 200 up 18.4 points, 1.2%. 3.4%. So we're not quite sure why we get different readings, but we have. Yes, uh, there you go. And there's the SIBO 200 that we, uh, as we already told you, up by 1.34%. Okay, well, that'll do us uh, for another episode of the COB. That'll do us for another day on Ausbiz. But you can catch up on everything on your website and app. As always, have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow morning. The COB is presented by Rabobank. Awarded 2023 SMSF Savings Bank of the Year by Mozo.